Hello again guys. Uh, as you probably remember, I was at CES just a couple of weeks ago, and while we were there, we shot a bunch of videos, and we had a bit of difficulty doing it. This is our second year in a row taking a tripod with us, and as you might expect, with there being hundreds of thousands of people there, a tripod in an event like that is kind of difficult to get up and going. But while we were there, we went to the AT&T Developer Summit, and someone had a shoulder rig that I found really interesting. So I did a little research on it. It was the Revo shoulder rig, and it costs about 80 or 90 bucks, depending on where you look. And it will support about 5.5 pounds of weight. Well, as I was reading about it, I actually stumbled upon this. This is a Movo SG100 mini shoulder rig. thought I'd go ahead and purchase it and pick it up, give it a shot. Because it was, instead of 70 or 80 or 90 dollars, 50 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link to that down in the video description if you're interested in checking that out. But anyway, I thought I would just open this up, put it together and everything, maybe put it on a camera and see how it looks, see how it works, and uh, give you some initial thoughts and impressions of it. So yeah, this right here, this first piece, is one of the main reasons I was kind of interested in it. The Rovo unit, Revo unit, that I looked at, uh, this whole section was actually two aluminum wires, whereas this entire thing is one solid plate. Very, very well put together. Not a huge fan of the color. Uh, I thought it was going to be a little more red, but I'm not going to complain about that because it's going to be behind the camera, right? Alright, what else do we have? Here is the shoulder pad. So these two pieces will actually hook together. It says Movo there. It's got three screws on one end, two on the other. So it's actually going to go together like this. And from what I understand, you take this little plate, which I'll go ahead and pull out. It looks like you would do it in line, but apparently you don't. And there we go. I've gone ahead and gotten the box out of the way at this point. So as you can see, we've got this uh, aluminum arm plate. has a little bit of padding here to set your camera on, and you can, of course, move it back and forth quite a bit. And this up here is where I would assume this screws in. This is the handle that goes on the front of the device. There we go. So yeah, camera can move back and forth very, very easily. And then you take this little guy, and you'll put it back here on the back with any one of these three screw plates that you want to use. And of course, after stumbling and fumbling for a few minutes here, I did look at the actual assembly instructions. It shows you're actually taking the black piece and putting it onto the little black bar, uh, not putting the black bar onto... Yeah, I was, I was confused previously, so we'll go ahead and do that correctly now. Uh, one thing I will say, as I've been using this, or as I've been assembling this, I noticed this little piece of foam is actually damaged. Not a massive amount of damage. I'm sure a piece of electrical tape, gaffer's tape, or, or duct tape even would probably take care of that. It's going to be just fine, though. And, of course, this is a piece of foam, so you could technically add more foam padding to it as you need it. We'll just sort of see over time if I if I do need, end up needing it. And there you have it. Just a few seconds later, after actually following the instructions, uh, we've got this assembled. It is one solid unit. Uh, it does have a little bit of give to it because this is, I guess, a potential weak point, point of failure there. But uh, it did go together pretty quickly and pretty easily once I did actually read the instructions. So let me go ahead and um, I'll see if I can mount a camera on this, see how it looks, see how it feels, things like that. Alright, so after doing a little bit of testing with my DSLR, just kind of holding it and panning around the room and things like that, uh, you might be able to see from the footage, it is noticeably more stable than just doing it handheld. And what I was using here is the Canon 6D with just a, a cheap 50mm lens that does not actually have any stabilization built into it. So uh, without any sort of stabilizer, any sort of thing to make it more steady, this thing is very, very shaky on its own. Not generally a lens I'm going to be carrying around and filming with, but it is a really good option to, to test with for something like that. And using the stabilizer, using the, the shoulder rig versus not using it, it's definitely a lot more steady footage. Looking back, I've actually seen some stuff over on Amazon and some videos related to it about a different product. It looks kind of like, I think it's called a spider or it's an e-photo shoulder rig. It's got two handles on it instead of one, so you hold it, you know, at a, you can't even see this because it's not wide enough angle, but two hands and then the, the, yeah, you'd have a second handle coming off of it and then it all kind of spiders out and it collapses down to be very small and looking at it, it's about 42, 45, sometimes even $50, so it may be worth taking a look at that as well. I really just kind of wanted to try this thing out and give it a Give it a look and give it a fair shake. 
Um, it, the one good thing about this is it does have some mounting plates here at the back, so you could technically screw something into it to add a little bit of weight. That's one thing I noticed about it. It doesn't really have any heft to it. It's very lightweight. So it, while it does give you a little stabilization in that you put your shoulder up here against it, you don't actually get any additional benefit of having any sort of weight on the rear end of it. But like I said, you could pretty easily mount something to that. I just haven't done that yet. Uh, additionally, it does provide some extra stabilization over just doing it handheld, so that was a big plus. Uh, previously, I would have to hold the camera with one hand and try to adjust the focus with another hand, and that doesn't work particularly well. But having one hand underneath the camera, firm, with uh, it mounted against the shoulder so it's not going to go back and forth or left or right very easily, then being able to use the other hand for focusing made it a whole lot easier. So overall, for 50 bucks, would I recommend it? Uh, I'm going to have to use it more before I really say that yes or no. It seems pretty decent so far, but uh, if, if I had to do it over again, and I may still moving forward, uh, there's, I think it's $43 right now, an e-photo uh, collapsible rig. I'll put a link to that down in the video description as well. I don't think it's going to have quite the, I don't know, it might have the, st the sturdiness that this one does, but it definitely collapses down a lot smaller and doesn't require any tools to put it together or keep it together. So that may be a better option for me with the amount that I travel. But anyway, if you have any questions about this, if you'd like to see more sample footage out of it, let me know down in the comment section below. But that's going to be all for me for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.